A lot of the art of debugging MATLAB or just making algorithms in MATLAB is the ability to make test data that's simple enough to understand and use to get your algorithm working before you put the more complicated data in. And so as I am trying to understand other people's code, very often what I need to do is take out the data that they bring in that I don't necessarily understand, put in data that I do understand as I'm working on the algorithm. So today I wanted to show some of the more typical pieces of test data that I use so that I can understand an algorithm or develop an algorithm. Let's start here at the beginning with the simple magic function. Magic will create an n by n array where all of the columns sum to the same value as do the rows and the two major diagonals. I don't usually use this property in the testing. It's mostly just a way of getting positive integers in a matrix. That's it. Sometimes you can use the special properties of magic, but that's really all I use it for is to get a bunch of positive values. The next one that I use very often is when I need a 3D plot to test something. I can say XYZ equals peaks, surf XYZ, and we've got that. Um, actually, you can also, if you need a 2D plot with a lot of lines, plot this with plot YZ. Or even simpler, we're going to clear the figure here. And if we just say plot peaks, it'll just get you the plot. You could do the same thing with surf peaks. Now here's another one that I end up using when I need to have a sparse matrix of ones and zeros. I will just make a matrix of zeros and then do a random permutation so that I get all of the integers in a random order from 1 to 100, the number of elements in the zeros. And then I'm just going to grab the first 20 or however many I need out of that random permutation and fill them with ones. So I'll get a matrix like this. If I run this again, it's another random matrix with just 20 ones inside of it. This is nice so that if I'm testing an algorithm, I can just recreate the random permutation and get a different test vector. And that can be useful so that you know you're not just falling victim to a special case. One of the other nice things about randperm is you can get a random vector out of it. And that's useful in a lot of cases where I just want some noisy vector of all integers greater than zero. Uh, membrane is a very good matrix that you can use for contour, surfing, and so on. So that's nice. If I need to have a vector that has some pattern to it, I will often just make a sine wave. If you want to mix up any of these, what you can do is just add rand to it. And that will give you some overlying structure with some noise on it. And again, with any of these with random, you can just keep running it over and over again to get different random values. A lot of times we need to have a fairly uniform matrix with some special feature in the middle of it. So I'll use a function like zeros to create the parent matrix. And then, let's scoot this over here, you see that I just subset into that matrix and put in rand or ones or what have you. And finally, one of the other kinds of matrices we might need is a four-dimensional data set where every x, y, z value has a value associated with it. So it's a volume of data. And so rather than try and create one of these myself, because that would be tough to do, especially if it's going to have any kind of pattern at all, 
what I will do is just use the test data that comes from flow that is the example data set for a function like slice. So that's also a nice technique. If you know that you want data that would be good at displaying the qualities of surf, if you look at surf in the documentation you'll find that it has a data set that it uses. So then you can just go and use that data set for yourself. MATLAB has a lot of built-in data sets. I wanted to show a little of those and also just how you can quickly create your own data sets for testing. Thank you.